Please put your hands together for Julie Bogart, Trevor Johnson, and Javida Roach. Hello, everyone. I am the founder and CEO of a nonprofit organization that empowers young women to practice self care. Hi, my name is Trevor Johnson. I look after our global business marketing team across Europe at TikTok. <laughs> my name is Julie Bogart. I work for Snapchat. I look after talent partnerships for EMEA. So firstly, for the creators in the room, I just want to thank you for all the work that, that, that you do. You are the lifeblood of platforms such as, such as TikTok. We, we couldn't exist without you guys. So thank you very much for all the work that you, you do to create really great content that people consume on a daily basis. So we are actually a messaging platform and a technology platform. So um, our users, they come to Snap to first and foremost speak with their family and friends via messaging and they use augmented reality also for their streaks or to have fun with the people that they love. The relationship that you tend to have with those creators as a user and creators or the community is a lot more closer and you connect a lot more emotionally with them than on other platforms. Um, so yeah, this is why we don't define ourselves as a social media platform. But from a TikTok perspective, we want to facilitate and really grow the creators on our platform rather than taking an influencer lens. How a platform like TikTok uh, it's approaching and impacting the digital commerce. Whenever I talk about this, I say people don't come to TikTok to shop, but they shop on TikTok. So people aren't necessarily going to the mall anymore. They're, they're turning to their digital devices to shop and be inspired. So we're, we're, we've very much seen a, a trend that people are using these, these devices, the mobile platforms, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, others, to want to be entertained. And if they see communication or messages from creators or brands that resonate with them. And even if they're commercial messages, people are willing to interact and respond to those, right? And, and commerce has now been facilitated. We think by, by platforms like ours, but also by the fact that people are increasingly turning to their digital devices for both, for both commerce and entertainment. And hopefully, when, from a creator perspective, it allows you to do two things. One is to build your community, but also to monetize yourself through that community in a very engaged in an authentic way. On Snap, what's really special, it's our augmented reality technology. We now have, I think, 250 million people using augmented reality on Snap every single day, and we have six billion daily plays. It's used by brands now to also connect in a different way with our customers. But you can also now try whatever you would like to buy before via that augmented reality. So I think that we're at the very beginning of how creator can actually use augmented reality to develop a, a, an immersive commerce strategy. But I think it's one to watch. TikTok made me buy it is, is, a, is a genuine trend where it's showing that these platforms can, can have real impact on, on, on selling. Uh, one of the things that we're working on at this moment now is TikTok made me love it, right? So it's how can you start to get, rather than um, the, the, the lower funnel, it's the, start, the upper funnel, start to build brands and using platforms like TikTok to make brands loved, which are then ultimately move, move towards there. So coming back to the original question about commerce, there was always a question around whether or not our platforms could do that. And I think that we've, we've probably shown that it, you can do that at scale uh, and predominantly through people in this room. So before I became a creator, I was in college, I was working three jobs. And although I was um, working on these jobs, I didn't quite need the money. I just loved to shop. So when I graduated, I stayed at my retail job and I was like, okay, this is it. This is going to be my calling. I'm going to work my way into management and then go into corporate and this is it. And then one day I received a call that I was not prepared for. I received the call that my young sister, who was 18 years old, just graduated high school, was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. She was shot 16 times and left for dead for someone to find her the next morning walking her dog. I was hurt but I decided to turn my pain into purpose. So I got into law enforcement, which is a huge difference from retail to law enforcement. And I realized this wasn't for me. I can make a change a different way. So I quit working in law enforcement and I created a small business. And I also created the nonprofit organization to honor my sister. And even still, even though I was passionate about what I was doing, I still wasn't bringing enough income. And I wasn't able to help my mother in our finances, and we became homeless. So in that moment, I had a choice to make. Am I going to cry about it, or am I going to boss up? And I was like, first of all, I'm going to do both. But then, <laughs> but then I'm going to create something that I've never done, which is build a community as an influencer. And I have built this community of people who were reading my blogs, who were supporting me. And I was like, I got to monetize this. 
So that's when I invested in the ebook and I started taking my content creation very seriously. I was hopping on trends. I was on TikTok, not Snapchat yet, but oh, yeah. yes, a few other apps. And um, I started to really regain my confidence and my um, commitment to serving my community. So I started pitching myself to brands, and there was this one brand in particular that I pitched to. It's called Amazon. I don't know if y'all heard about them. <laughs> But Amazon accepted me into their program, and ever since then, my life has changed for the better. Um, not just financially, but emotionally and mentally. I'm able to live abundantly now. Um, and I'm also able to still pour it into my nonprofit organization, which enabled me to become a United Nations Champion of Change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime a brand wants to work with me, I tell them, so I'm not just an influencer. I'm an Amazon influencer, and I'm just so grateful to be here. Trevor, how do you see brands and creators leveraging trends in order to broaden the audience and also share their recommendation to a wider group? When we think about creators, when we think about brands telling compelling, uplifting, engaging stories on our platform, leveraging trends and memes is, is a way to do that. Uh, memes are now the platform to tell stories. I would say, Leveraging trends is, has to be part of a strategy if you want to, to, to be current and, and creating daily or weekly um, uh, content. Uh, if you're a brand, leveraging things we know that resonates with your community. Uh, we don't talk about demographics um, at TikTok. We talk about communities, right? It's going to be really important for brands and organizations to be able to sell to, but also you as, as creators to, to find or increase your communities of people that you talk to. A lot of people are always, what, what should we do as a, if you're talking to like a, a, a Burberry or a Gucci and they, and they want you to show up like how they do elsewhere, which is beautifully curated vi videos and films or, or photos. Actually, what they do on TikTok is they show the behind the scenes, they show the process, the sparks of, of, of the content of, of, that resonates with users. On our platform is the build. So yeah, it is using the cleaning products on the sink as opposed to showcasing it in a beautiful ad. And Julie, uh, what's the, the approach of, uh, of Snapchat in terms of trends? I, I want to I wanna pick up on what Trevor said right now on the behind the scenes because we have a, we have a say in the company where if, um, if other platforms want to see the 1% that perfect when it comes to, to how you are, what you do, we're happy to have 99% of the rest of that content. We think it's so easy to be ourselves, but it's actually quite hard. But when, a, when, a, when an app gives you the opportunity to just post whatever you want, then you become more likable. And I think everyone in this room is pro has probably struggled at some point with that sort of um, uh, fine line between what am I comfortable posting and what is more me. In the middle, on your perspective, how <laughs> do you approach the concept of being you with like, leveraging the trends that you see like, on TikTok or, or on social media platforms? <laughs> Well, I really just show who Davida is. I do that by, you know, um, creating a catchy caption to grab the, um, the audience's attention within the first three seconds by either introducing myself or the product that I'm using. Uh, of course, I may be incorporating my family or my fiance so that way I can attract um, other people who are engaged or in a relationship. And then, of course, my style, what I'm wearing, because a lot of people pay attention to that, too. So I'm also able to monetize off that. For me, my main, my main recommendation would always be to just be yourself and be authentic. And I know that it sometimes doesn't mean much, but what we've also developed uh, at Snap, because we understand that you have so many platforms that you need to feed and nurture, and we understand that time is money. So we've put in place um, monetization tools. So one, uh, we've developed a new format that's called the mid-rolls. So you can actually start monetizing your stories. Um, it's a revenue share between uh, Snap and yourself. And uh, we also have on the fifth tab, um, if you're not familiar with the app, um, a place called Spotlight. So Spotlight is, um, is a place where you can post content that lives on Snap um, for as long as you, as you want it to be there. And it's also monetizable. And it was a response to a lot of creators who were telling us, you know, I've done these stories today and I really like them and I really wish I could keep them there for longer. And yeah, so I would say, authentic content, explore our monetization tools, and explore our, cre uh, our creativity through augmented reality, and then just, you know, get going. No one's gonna judge you there. Yeah. On TikTok, there's, there's probably a couple of things you should be thinking about. One is our creator marketplace, yeah. where now creators can sign up to, uh, to, to get briefs 
from brands. Brands can go and find creators that are based on um, number of followers, um, the communities they can, they can source, and they can put in briefs and the creators can respond to those briefs. So the creative marketplace is something we really want to build. Let's go, another thing is called um, branded missions, um, where we get brands to brief the creative network or creator network. They then create examples of what they could be uh, producing for those brands. Those brands will then sign that off and then put media money behind those TikToks as well as give uh, as well as pay that creator. So um, and then we and then we put it into the into you for your feed. So that's where we're able to help creators monetize. Um, and then third, there's something called um, Spark Ads. So if you are creating content anyway, and you in integrate a brand in, uh, into that in some way, um, you could let them know, and then they can actually um, boost your, your content for you and potentially give you a, um, a fee on top of that as well. So if you're going to do that anyway, right, there might be an opportunity for you to do that through Spark Ads. David, uh, a lot of creators here really want to understand uh, how they can build a sustainable and long-term business. When you're shopping, every product has a purpose. And as long as you can convey that to your audience, you're able to sell and of course build a successful storefront. Of course, having those links available in your stories. Don't just talk about the features of the product. Talk about the benefit. Make it easy for them to find and to buy. Yeah. So before I even upload the video, I'm putting the products in my Amazon storefront. Like the other day, I created a video of me doing my skincare routine, talk about how I almost missed my flight here. And I made sure before I posted it that I added all the skincare items in my Amazon storefront so people could easily shop them. If you want to grow just, just on TikTok, then yeah, they're, they're making great content that resonates, that gets spread, shared, um, and, and ends, up, ends up in the full you feed. And you can't really trick it, right? You can't put hashtag FYP mm. and it, it trends. <laughs> it has to be, it has to be good content, right? And I'm sure you're using YouTube and, and Snap and, and TikTok and Instagram in very different ways, but try and figure out how you can map those together in some way and, and, and play different stories across those platforms so people can know and recognize you whichever platform they land on. It's an exciting time for Snap. Like we opened up a talent team uh, in EMEA in 2021. So it's still very new. We're making big progress and for whoever is going to give it a try, they'll see that it's yielding to great results very quickly, actually. And as for me, as an example, I'm a 2023 bride. So, I, so I'm showing my followers what I plan on wearing the night of my wedding. So really just incorporating the journey that I'm on and the products that I'm using that builds community. And I'm also able to just sell, monetize my content. That's cool. Thank you very much for sharing. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you from all of us at Amazon for joining the Influencer Program and taking part in the first ever Amazon Influencer Summit in Europe. Until next time. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen. So long. Peace out.